You ever wonder why some people retire early while others work until they die? What if I told you that the difference doesn't lie in their skill level, but in how they think about money? That's right. While you're at the top of your game professionally, achieving financial freedom is a completely different ball game altogether. This is where Napoleon Hill's timeless classic, Think and Grow Rich comes into play. Now, I've lost count of how many times I've read the book. And even though it was written back in 1937, it's still very relevant today because each time that I read it, I actually discover something new like hidden principles that I didn't see before. And in this video, I'm going to share with you one of those newfound principles, the secret power of the pyramid, something that Hill actually discusses throughout the book, but yet I missed on the first time I read it. So before we get into it, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Jeff Anzalone, a periodontist on a mission to get you out of the rat race with passive income. If you haven't already downloaded my free passive income guide, links below the video. All right, let's get into it. The first principle of the pyramid that, that Hill actually talks about and which he claims to be actually the first, well, let me back up. If you don't know much about Think and Grow Rich, he, and this was back in the twenties and thirties, he went around and he interviewed multi, multi millionaires and possibly even billionaires today, like the, the Rockefellers and the Carnegie's. I mean, people, big time people, kind of like Dr. Tom Stanley. He went out in, in his book, I think it was produced, I think he wrote it in 1996, The Millionaire Next Door. You probably heard about The Millionaire Next Door. And he went out and he interviewed several thousands of quote, everyday millionaires, you know, people that just work a nine to five for 40 years and they amassed a million bucks. Well, he interviewed them and wanted to know what are all their characteristics? How do they get like that? Okay. This is what Napoleon Hill did back then. He interviewed all these people and he wrote down what are their characteristics and this pyramid, the three things that we're going to be talking about right now is the, the really the thing that, that stood out that they all had as character traits. Okay. So when he interviewed these people, the, the first principle of this pyramid, and again, which he claims to be the first step to riches is this, and this is the first part of the pyramid D for desire. Okay. He states that desire is the, is the ultimate beginning. It's the beginning of all achievement. And the illustration that he used is when describing desire in the book is having a quote, a white hot desire. It's not just about you going out and you wanting something, you want to achieve it, whatever. It's about having a white hot desire. These people that had all their accomplishments and, and here's another thing. What's the title of the book? Is it how to grow rich? No, it's think and grow rich. And that was like one of the first things that passed me over reading it multiple times. I didn't even realize it was all about, he went back and, and how they thought about money, how they thought about wealth, how they thought about finances. They all thought differently. You know, everybody thinks, you know, think about 99% of the people are where they are right now financially because how they think about money. They think they have to work a nine to five. They think they have to work until they're 70 and put money in a 401k. And then hopefully the stock market's okay when they retire. And they're always worried about running out of money. That was the, the millionaire next door. They, they bought secondhand clothes. They bought used cars. They, they live cheaply. They, they clip coupons and all this their whole life. And yeah, they had a million bucks. Well, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But Napoleon Hill, when he's interviewing these people, totally different way of thinking. Here's another example, personal example. When I was in dental school, we had to like make our own gold crowns. You know, part of our fee that we had to pay at the beginning of the year, part of our tuition or whatever, we got these, these, uh, I think it was 24 karat, like these gold squares. And then we would melt them down in the process of making gold crowns. When we, we would put a, you know, we'd heat them up. We'd have a flame, have like a little crucible or whatever. And then the flame would change colors and the gold would change colors, different colors. And one of those colors, at the end of the process was white. Once the gold and the flame turned white, it was at like the highest temperature during this entire process. It turned white hot. That's the kind of passion and drive that you're going to need to fuel your journey and your success. That's what he talked about that white hot desire. Remember, remember that desire is the starting point of all your achievement. Now, what this means for you is, is, to start by identifying what you, what do you truly want? 
What do you want? You know, this, that's actually the first question that I, that I ask my financial freedom coaching clients. What do you want? Nine times out of 10, they can't answer that question. But until you answer that question, it, it's really hard to do anything. What, so what do you want? Is it more time with your family? You have a specific financial goal, early retirement, whatever it is, make sure that it's something that really motivates you. It really sets your soul on fire. That's, that's the D. Okay. That's the desire. All right. So the second part is this. So he'll, he'll cause second part is F for faith or belief. Okay. He'll cause faith actually the most powerful force on earth. And you know what? He's not wrong. Now this isn't so much about religious faith, although, you know, if you're a Christian like me, that's very important, but it's about believing in you, believing in your own, in your own potential and your ability to achieve your goals. You got to have belief in yourself. And it's amazing, completely amazing what you can do if you just have faith. Here's an easy way to think about faith. In the Bible, there's actually a passage that talks about having faith as small as a mustard seed. I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard seed before, but it's, it's very small, it's tiny. It's one of the smallest seeds out there, but it has the potential to grow into a very large plant. And the idea is that even a small amount of belief or faith in yourself and your goals can, can grow huge, it can, it can move mountains, okay? Faith is like a, you know, like a coach's pep talk before a big game. So imagine like you're standing out on the field, you're ready to play and the coach comes over and he kind of sees you, your head's down or whatever. And he starts talking to you and he starts pouring into you. He believes in your abilities. Okay. Even when you may doubt yourself and that pep talk, that pep talk that you get, it starts to remind you of all your strengths and all the, the work that you put into it and the effort. And it pushes you to overcome your challenges. And it, then it starts to give you the confidence to perform at your best. So in the game of life and finances, your internal faith is going to be that coach. It's inside of you. That's what's going to drive you forward, guiding you through literally each play and making sure that you reach your goals. I've done this myself. We help people with coaching and, and that is one of the most important parts before you start anything with even remember with even a small seed of faith, you can start to build the momentum to keep moving forward, no matter what challenges you face. Okay. Now we've got our desire. And we'd started to work on our faith. Okay. And believe in ourselves, which takes us to the, th to the third principle. And that is this action. So he'll cause this chapter in the book, actually decision, but we're going to use action. Okay. Remember, and it goes like this desire to faith. So you, you have to, you have to have faith in yourself, in your, in your abilities before you act. Okay. You're likely to take any action or take on something without faith or, or belief, right? This is why he'll list these principles in the order that we've discussed so far. All right. So let's, let's talk about something that most people are familiar with losing weight. Okay. Perfect example. What happens during Christmas, during the holidays, you start eating all this food, you eat the fudge, you eat the brownies, you eat the turkey dressing, you know, you, you're just, you're stuffed and you're like, Oh, I'm not worried about it because what new year's is coming along. Right. And what happens at all the gyms around town and, and after new year's, they fill up with people that all made these new year's resolutions to get fit, to lose weight, to start working out. Right. And they start off and they're all fired up for the first couple of weeks to lose weight and, and all the, all the pounds that they put on over the holidays. Right. But by say February or March, most of what quit. Why? Because they, they took action without cultivating. Remember that, remember we started talking about that white hot desire and faith in their ability to change, right? So here's how it typically plays out. They go to the gym because it feels like it's the right thing to do. They just gain 10 pounds over the holidays. It's a good idea. It feels like it's the right thing to do. They've always done it, but without a deeper burning desire, their motivation does what? It quickly fades out. So they have that lack of desire. They haven't truly connected with why, why do they want to lose weight? Really? Is it for better health? Is it for more energy, improve self-confidence? What? Remember without a clear and a really compelling reason when they're going to the gym, those gym sessions, guess what? They just become a chore. Okay. They just, oh, I got to go to the gym again. And they just seem unable to find the time to go regularly absence of faith. They lack their belief in their ability to succeed. Maybe they've had some past failures haunt them, or 
Maybe they start going and they don't see immediate results, which is going to what? It's going to undermine their confidence. And then they do what? They quit altogether. So this is the pyramid of success. So remember, when you combine a white hot desire with a strong faith or belief, and then you take action, you create this powerful cycle, desire, faith, action. And this action that you're taking, it starts to feed or fuel your desire. Desire fuels belief, belief fuels action, and then action feeds back in desire. It's this pyramid of principles that basically support your journey, again, to whatever you're trying to accomplish. And that action, when you just start something, it creates the white hot desire even more. And then this keeps on going on and on. And then now, now you can see this pyramid of success that Hill talks about. If you put it into motion, if you put it into effect, it can create unbelievable things within ourselves. And here's the cool part. You can actually trick yourself. Yes, that's right. You can actually trick yourself once you start taking these steps and you get to the point when, when you're taking action and then it just keeps going and then you're taking more action and then you're taking more action. And then the thought of quitting, guess what? Because you're seeing results, the thought of quitting gets further and further out of your mind. Let me ask you a question. And out of the two, out of all the classes I took in college, I, I made two C's and I was in physics. So I'm not good in physics, but I do remember they talked about Newton's first law of motion. Okay. Do, do you remember that? And you probably remember you, maybe you had a little something on your desk that it was like a little stand with the little stainless steel ball bearings. And now you can, you can take them like this and go back and forth. So Newton's first law of motion states a body at rest stays at rest and a body in motion stays in motion. So what happens when you take that ball and you swing it out and then it hits and it hits this other ball in the middle and the ball in the middle creates motion. And this one goes and it's like, click, click, click. So as soon as you start that motion, a body in motion stays in motion. So as long as you have some sort of inertia, that motion, you, you're likely to continue with that inertia. So what this means is if you can create any type of motion, any type of action, then you're likely to continue that action. So the next time that you have a desire, you can actually trick yourself into taking some type of action, create some faith, and then ask yourself immediately, what kind of action can I take? And it doesn't matter if it's just a small step. It doesn't matter as long as it's something that can get you going in the right direction. That's all that matters. Remember two words. If you want to try to accomplish something, remember two words, do something, do something. That's your action. Let me give you an example. This is a personal example that, will bring all of this together so that you can understand. Okay. I now I'm routinely coaching dentists and doctors about investing in real estate for passive income. So initially they schedule a call with me. And one of the first questions that I ask them is again, what do you want? Most of them come in and they answer, well, I want some passive income, Jeff. I want passive income. Now I can usually tell by the tone of their voice, by how they answer that question, whether or not they're going to be successful or not. If they say, yeah, I don't know. I kind of think about it. I just want some passive income. You know, I saw one of your YouTube videos or I read one of your articles, you know, I, I think it'd be good for me. Okay. If they answer like that, which many of them do most of the time, unfortunately they fail, but if it, but if they answer, yeah, I'd like some passive income. And then they tell me, they tell me why they give me their burning desire then they're going to be much more successful. Like what happened to me. So after practicing for 10 years, I injured my hand snow skiing, which was my wake up call that if I can't use my hands treating patients, I couldn't provide for my family as a dentist. That was scary as hell with two little kids. So for me, failure was not an option. I, I threw it out. I was dead set on doing anything that I could to create multiple income streams outside of my dental practice that could actually feed my family in case I couldn't practice anymore, in case something happened to my hands permanently. Luckily it didn't back then, but what if that would have happened? And when I started learning about how wealthy people operated financially, started YouTube channels, you know, look, reading books, watching videos, reading articles. When I saw what the really ultra wealthy did financially, and then saw people in my area, my age doing the same thing that made me believe that gave me the faith that I could do it too. So now I had the desire. I had the white hot desire. I had to do something to, pr to protect my family financially. If I couldn't practice to, to put food on the table, to pay the bills. I had the faith because I saw other people doing it. I, I believed that I could do it. And what's the next step? Do something. 
take some sort of action. So what did I do? Well, the first thing that I did, because I'd just gone to college and dental school, I didn't, I didn't know anything about money or real estate or passive income, anything. So the first thing I did was just start to educate myself. That's it, about how real estate works. Didn't have a clue. 99.9% .9 of the stuff that I learned is just what you're doing right now for free. YouTube videos, podcasts, articles. Then I started reading books. I had to pay a little bit of money for that, but who cares? They don't teach you any of this in dental school or medical school or whatever. Now, did I go out and start just investing money blindly and buying this property over here and, and oh yeah, this is a good medical startup. I'm gonna throw some money over here or whatever. No, I took action by doing something, educating myself on information that I was completely clueless about. That's it. Now, this eventually started me down the road it's not a get rich quick thing or scheme or whatever, but this started the process. This started the process. Started me down the road to begin networking with people, taking more action, going to a conference, going to meetups, networking with people outside of my social network. I was just going to dental meetings. What do dentists usually do when they go to dental meetings? They're learning about dentistry and that's it. They want to get their CE, their continuing education credits, and then they go on. Once I got outside of my social network, I was able to meet people some really fantastic people who eventually became partners of mine that I'm actually still involved with today. One of them we've bought, uh, as of this video, 24 RV parks together and another one, eight mobile home parks together. That would have never happened had I not taken the action to start educating myself like you're doing right now with this video. That's it. And that, that is what Kiel was talking about in the book. This, this what he called the secret pyramid, of how they thought, think and grow rich. How you think about things is what is the action that you're gonna take. And if I could go back to my 25 year old self when I got out of dental school, if I would have known this, it would have been a whole different type of future for me. But that's the best time to do it. The second best time to learn all this is right now and you're doing that now, okay? So here's the bottom line. Most of us, you, me included, we know what to do most of the time in anything. So. If you want to lose weight, you know what you need to do, right? Eat less, track your steps, work out, go to the gym, don't drink alcohol, stay away from sugar. You know what to do. We know what to do, right? But it takes doing it. It takes action to make it happen, right? And the question you must ask yourself is, why can't I do what I need to do? Why can't I do what I need to do? That's it. Now, we've, we've talked about the three main principles today, okay? We know we need to do them. So but why can't you do it each time? I can't answer that for you. I can answer that for me, but I can't answer that for you. For some people, it may be like a self-esteem issue. We may not feel that we deserve success for whatever reason. I, I don't know. I don't know how you were raised or you had somebody tell you, talk down to you, like you'll, you're gonna be a failure, you're never gonna amount to anything, whatever. I don't know. And, and think about it. It's going to affect whatever it is. It's gonna affect all three principles, especially this one, the faith or belief principle. And when we overcome and we, and we conquer how we process failure, it will be so much easier to move forward and have success with these three principles. And speaking of failure, I've failed multiple times. I still fail today, you can ask my wife. Speaking of failure, if you wanna learn my opinion, the number one reason that keeps people poor, keeps them failing at money, failing at finances today, check out this video.